Hello, everybody. We are back at it again with a, another episode of Badgerland Journal Stories of Wisconsin. And I'm going to be honest with you, the topic of today's podcast was not what I initially planned it to be. <laughs> so I have a different episode, which I'm still going to do, that I started doing research on. And then I realized that I couldn't just stop at like the basic stuff. I wanted to dig deeper. So that one's getting like sidelined for a little bit. Instead, today we are going to talk about Death Store Passage and how Door County, Wisconsin got its name. Door County comes from this idea of Death Store's Passage. Where is this? Um, this is in north, the northeast part of Door County on the Door Peninsula. And it's pretty much around the shores of Pilot, Plum, Detroit, and Washington Island. Because you kind of go to the tip, and there's a bunch of islands, Washington Island being the largest. Um, Plum Island is a little bit bigger. Well, Detroit's Detroit Island is long and thin. Plum Island, still like decent sized. Pilot Island is like barely an island. Um, but these are all really right off the coast of the Dora Peninsula. And the reason why you have to go through this area is this is the passage between the Bay of Green Bay into Lake Michigan. And the reason it gets its name as Death's Door is there has been a lot of shipwrecks that have occurred between this passage and this is partially because during storms, there can be very strong currents in the water, very strong winds coming about. Um, and in certain places, the shore gets very shallow. So if a, if a boat drifts off too far, it's going to get grounded in the reefs off of this island. And so there is a lot of stories surrounding Death Store, how it got its name. All right, so before we get into what we actually know about Death Store and the more historical facts surrounding it, I do want to tell you a little bit of the legend that comes from its name. And so I'm going to preface all of these stories by telling you we're not 100% sure if any of them are true. Um, it is over a hundred years till these accounts are written down from when they potentially happened. Um, but there are still stories that kind of influence the lore of Door County, which is why I want to discuss them. Um, so there is kind of a wide berth when it comes to this legend and what details are included and what kind of follows the story. But it all kind of loosely surrounds this idea that there was a Indian war band that was crossing Death Store when the waters turned violent, capsizing canoes and the men and hundreds of men in this war band died. So that's like the premise. Now, there's pretty much every different way to explain why there was a war band, who they were fighting, where were they going, why were they going there. And we're going to talk about some of the more popular stories in a little bit. But that kind of is the, the story that is told regarding how Death Store ends up getting its name. Um, there's actually a written account in 1835 kind of explaining this, saying that there were hundreds of Indians dashed against these rocks and killed in a single storm. Kind of this massacre of people leading to have a connotation of death through this passage. And to be honest, it's also possible that there was never a war band. Um, there are some similar stories regarding early French and American travelers getting caught and being capsized in the passage. It's also possible if they were Native Americans, that they were traveling to go trade with uh, French French traders who were resting in nearby rocky areas and they were caught in the storm. But the idea is that after this, after this storm, you are going to see the Native Americans refer to this 
this passage as death's door out of either reverence for the dead or bodily fear of the passage. And so when the French come to trade with them, they adapt that name. So I'm gonna tell you a couple of different versions of Native American band was wiped out. So the first version I'm going to talk about is printed in the history of Dora County, Wisconsin in 1881. And it kind of follows the story saying that there is a disagreement between the Potawatomi and the the Potawatomi and the Chippewa. Um, the Potawatomi was operating out of Washington Island for their fishing. You know, they're using the different bays around the island, but they still laid claim to hunting ground on the mainland. And so they had issues with the Chippewa who were coming in and hunting on their land and they were not being scared off. Like nothing they were doing were getting rid of the Chippewa from their area. So the Potawatomi on the island, um, they gather their flotilla of birch bark canoes and they start to attempt to cross to the mainland under the cover of night. So they're trying to do a like night or a surprise attack. And then it is said that a white squall, so like a really bad, like windy storm, um, comes through and it turns over the canoes and drowns the men as they are trying to go to the mainland. So that's one story that the Potawatomi were upset over hunting rights. And so then they're going to the mainland when they are capsized. And that's the kind of the story that I'd heard, but I heard it was the Winnebago instead of the Chippewa, like when I was growing up. But again, this story has been told so many times over, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a hundred different variations with slightly different details. There's another story very similar in the history of Door County, Wisconsin, the country beautiful. So it's like the basic stories, except now you have the Winnebago's instead of the Chippewa. Um, but there's like a lot of exaggeration and they definitely embellish some details. So again, you have the Potawatomi's on Washington Island. However, it's the Winnebago's who want to drive the Potawatomi off of the island. And so they're planning attack, but the Potawatomi know what's happening. So then they're going to plan a counterattack. And they actually send spies to the mainland to let them know when they should land. And the spies are captured and tortured. And so the Winnebago use their own code against them and trick the Potawatomi into sailing right into rocky shores, killing Potawatomi warriors. But then when the Winnebago in an act of karma try to cross the water, they too are capsized. So it's a very epic epic tale. Whether or not any of it is true, highly questionable. Um, the final account I'm going to talk about was published in 1836, Wisconsin Indian Place Legends. And this one is a little bit more simpler. The conflict is between the Noquet on the island and the Potawatomi on the peninsula. The Potawatomi this time are the ones to invade while the Noquet were there. And they while the Noquet were away. So they kind of go in, take over the island. The Noquet attempt to take back the island, but are completely wiped out. And the, it is said that their bodies supposedly washed ashore on Detroit Island after this battle. So I'm gonna be honest, I think that maybe there is a sliver of truth within these legends, but I think a lot of the finer details are added to create a good story, because that's really what we want, is a good story, right? But it is likely that something had occurred here that the Native Americans knew and had passed down through oral traditions. And so their warnings of death store is what kind of allowed it to get its name. So if we're gonna look at the first written mention of this as death door, death store, it happens in 17, 1728. And the French start referring to it as Capa la Mort, um, which translates loosely 
to if you google translate it it's death's gates but we would say death's door so it's very likely that any any event that would have happened to the native americans would have happened prior to 1728 so whatever the major inciting incident was happened before this uh, I don't know if you were paying attention, but when I was telling you when these different accounts were published, they're all published in the 1800s, if not the 1900s. So keep that in the, in the back of your mind when you're listening to some of these legends of when were they published, who's telling them, because then you can kind of have an idea of how much of this is uh, truth and how much of it is just kind of legend and lore. Um, it's also possible, very interest, interesting uh, thought posited, that the legend itself was not created by the Native Americans or not told by the Native Americans, but told by the French themselves to discourage, discourage English uh, exploration of the area. And in all likelihood, when we are hearing these stories, they have a mixture of influence from the Native Americans in the area the French travelers, the American settlers, um, all are going to go into kind of creating the different stories we hear today. Interestingly enough, we don't actually know the death toll for the passage. So obviously if it was earlier accounts, we don't have a reliable record, but when we start getting into the 1800s, um, there actually isn't recorded deaths. There are plenty of ship deaths, that ships that are taken down to the bottom of Lake Michigan. But interestingly, their crew often survives without problems. Um, as I mentioned, the passage has the passage has strong currents and directional winds that it can be hard for ships to resist heading towards the coast. So if they're sailing and a wind catches them the right way, like I said, it can just push them into those reefs and you can ground the ship. The kind of destruction that Death Store inflicted on these ships uh, steadily decreases when we start having construction of lighthouses. Um, there's a lighthouse on Plum Island, which I believe is still active today. And then in addition, Pilot Island, which I told you is probably can't be a mile long. Um, that that lighthouse was created in 1850. That actually I don't believe the lighthouse is on there anymore. Actually, pictures of Pilot Island. I might have to post a picture. Um, so interestingly enough, there's a bird that has like basically toxic poop, and it killed all the vegetation on the island. So trees, bushes, grass. So it looks kind of a uh, spooky which I guess we're coming up on October, so get a little bit of your spooky season in. Um, but today, I think it's just a small island. I don't know if it has a working lighthouse or not. It might, because like lighthouses as we have know them today, it's not like you have a light keeper. It's more of like kind of a radio beacon that like connects with the ships to be like, hey, you're getting close to me. Um, not like the bright light that we think of uh, when we think of historical lighthouses. So we do know that 24 different boats, ships, schooners, vessels, that 24 vessels were lost between 1837 and 1914. Nearby islands, bays, kind of different areas claimed 40 between 1830 and 1950. And hundreds of other vessels were sh stranded, foundered, wrecked, uh, but were able to be recovered before they sank. So basically, like, they weren't going anywhere in that moment, but they were able to get another ship to come and get them out, bring them back to an area to be recovered, fixed, and can float again. Um, and actually, interestingly, so if you've ever been through Sturgeon Bay, well, interestingly, I mean, maybe if you're in Sturgeon Bay, you knew this. I've driven through Sturgeon Bay, I don't know how many times, and I wasn't aware this is why, why this had occurred. But you cross, um, going through Sturgeon Bay, you cross over a bridge. There's kind of like a river or a canal that goes through and cuts Sturgeon Bay in half. 
This is not a man-made canal. This was made in 1881 specifically to allow boats to bypass Death Store Passage. So granted, as in 1850-ish, you have people who are building lighthouses, making it easier to travel through that passage. People just did not want to deal with Death Door. They're like, nope, we're just going to go through the peninsula. So like I said, they cut right through the Door Peninsula, through Sturgeon Bay. So you can just bypass that entirely. So as I mentioned, no lives were actually lost during the 1800s. Um, and this isn't just due to, oh, it's not that dangerous. There was a concerted effort by locals, passing ships, light people who were working in the lighthouse and other light saving services to make sure that there was people around to help these ships should they, you know, get, get into trouble. A little bit more Door County history for you. Um, Bailey's Harbor is actually discovered in 1848 by Captain Justice Bailey, who found the harbor when he needed to pull in safely um, out of a storm from Death Star Passage. He's like, nope, I know the legends. I'm not going through there. And he's like, oh, look at this. There's a nice little harbor. I'll name this Bailey's Harbor. <laughs> But in the fall of 1872, over a hundred vessels were stranded or damaged in the passage. So that must have been a real bad year for sailing through Death Star. Must have been pretty stormy, pretty windy. Um, and then there are, which I'll talk about, there's three ships specifically I'll get into, but there's also a mention of the Maria Hillard which was reported being wrecked somewhere near Plum Island Death Door in 1856. It's one of the earliest recorded ships to sink in the passage. And the site of the sinking is unknown, which I don't know if the boat crashed, the men were in the water and they were rescued, but they couldn't really find their way back. A lot of these are occurring at night when visibility is low. Um, but there's also unknown casualties. I'm a little confused how that works. Like, how do you know a ship is sank if you don't have people to confirm, like, hey, I was on the ship, it sank? Or alternatively, how can there not be casualties if you know that a ship just disappeared and then the crew disappeared too? Like, you'd assume there's casualties. Maybe? Maybe. Anyways, but that's one of the earliest ones to, sh to sink in the passage. But I'm going to talk about now what I like to call the Pilot Island Graveyard. So this is one I've mentioned a couple times. It can't be more than a mile long. It's a tiny freaking island. But it has its own like ship graveyard. That's what I'm gonna call it. So this all starts with the ship named the Forest. And this was a schooner. So if you, if, by the way, if you really like shipwreck stories and sailing stories in Lake Michigan, I have two episodes. I have one on the Christmas tree ship and I have another one on Dan Seavey, who would have been the pirate of the Great Lakes. You can go check those out. But if you remember, like a schooner is a relatively, like it's a smaller ship, but it's usually carrying cargo. Okay, so I know you guys don't know this because I just edited this a bunch of times to make it seem real smooth. This is like the fourth time I've tried to explain this. Do you ever have that thing where you try to read your notes and you're like, wait, this doesn't make sense. But then like you have to go back and like read everything. You're like, oh. Anyways, so what happens with the forest is this ship is sailing through Death Star Passage on October 28th, 1891. And so it's from Chicago going to the Garden Bay in Lake Mich or up in northern Michigan. And it gets pushed into kind of the outer reef around the island. Luckily, the lighthouse keeper on Pilot Island saw that the ship got stranded. He goes out and he rescues the cab captain of the ship along with four crew members. And while they're there, the cabin of the forest, so as they've gotten them off, they watch as the cabin of the forest, so, you know, where the crew is staying, 
gets completely swept away by the storm and pieces of the vessel are broken up and so only pieces could actually be salvaged but the reason i got confused is there's also articles from the time talking about how the owner of the ship kept coming up to door county to try and get a ship to carry the slabs that this schooner was carrying the forest was carrying um take that away and bring that to michigan i'm sure a to try and regain some of his profits but then B, he was trying to get the forest afloat. So I don't know if just because the cabin was gone, maybe the ship was still relatively intact. But eventually another storm came in, pretty much decimated that hope. And we will see that, that a lot of these ships, they're like, well, maybe we can salvage it once the storm is done. And then Death Star like, nah, that's mine. So that's the story of the forest. This occurs in 1891. And we're going to have... Uh, two years later is when we are going to see the next two ships that join this Pilot Island graveyard. So fall of 1892 was a very stormy season in Lake Michigan. There was multiple ships that got grounded during this. And the J.E. Gilmore was traveling to Elk Rapid, Michigan, and they were doing this without cargo. So they were traveling probably to go pick cargo up, but the lack of cargo makes their ship very light. And as I mentioned, Lake Michigan, especially this passage, the winds can be very strong. So that's gonna come into play in just a minute. So on October 17th, 1892, the ship was passing through Death Store near Pilot Island and the wind shifted and it blew the ship into the reef around 11 p.m. And this was wrecked very close to the forest, like within like probably 10 feet of the same location. The lighthouse keeper, Martin Knudsen, was able to set up communication with the crew. And he actually kind of, in case of emergency, set up like a buoy system if they needed to come on, onto the island. But at this time, the cabins were safe and they had enough provision to last them for weeks. So the men just stayed on the ship. They're like, you know, we're just kind of grounded. Everything's intact. We're just going to chill here for a little bit. And so they stayed here for about 11 days. And at first I'm like, God, 11 days for a storm. But then I also thought about the fact that, A, these ships are not as uh, advanced as the ones we see today. And... B, it's possible the water was just very choppy. And so he was able to get the lighthouse sailboat out and bring them to the shore. But they were stuck on Pilot Island for, you know, a little over, a little under two weeks. So exactly 11 days later, the J.E. Gilmore crew saw the A.P. Nicholson, another schooner, who joined them in nearly the exact same location on the 11th day. Because on October 28th, 1892, the AP Nichols was going to Chicago, from Chicago to Escanaba, and she had again a very light load. So the ship actually turned towards Plum Island, like they got caught in the storm, and they were like, okay, we need to just stop. So they were turning towards Plum Island, hoping to just drop their anchor and find shelter and just kind of weather the storm. However, the ship ended up drifting towards Pilot Island and it became stranded in the reef exactly, almost exactly where the forest and the Gilmore was. And so they too spent a few days on the lighthouse with on Pilot Island, stranded with the crew of J.E. Gilmore. Between the two crews, you had 16 people on this island that, like I said, cannot be a mile long. Well, actually, okay. So then both these ships are grounded. Again, they're thinking maybe they can be salvaged, but it's getting to be winter season, which means that there's not going to be a ton of ships that are going to make it a priority to come get these other ships out of the lake. And so... You're coming into spring and there's a super bad storm, March of 1893. 
in which both of these ships, whatever was remaining, pretty much smashed to pieces. Oh, I didn't mention, there is a steamer that comes and picks up the crew and takes them off and brings them home. They don't just get stranded there for the rest of their lives. Um, as soon as the storm calmed down, the crews were taken off the island, but the ships remained up until they're smashed to pieces. And then in 1956, you know, about, what would that be, 63 years later, you're going to see the first, like, divers visiting this ship cemetery. And a quote is, the ghostly remains of the Gilmore and the Nichols today lie strewn down a sand and cobblestone incline about 300 feet west of Pilot Island's boat dock. That is the story of kind of death's door, which, like I said, we don't actually know if it was really that deadly of a passage. We have lore that there was a war band wiped out. But that we know of, we actually don't have any deaths that we can specifically attribute to Death Store. And people safely travel it today. My family goes up to Washington Island on vacation sometimes. We have taken the ferry countless times. Although there has been a few times, like, we go hunting up there. And I remember there was a time we went to leave the island. And we're like, oh, we're just going to go home tonight, whatever. We get to the ferry dock and they're like, yep. We're not running the ferries. So there does come a point where even the ferry dock who knows how to navigate Death's Door goes, nope, nope, we're not doing it. But I also know I had to call my parents and verify this. But so normally, so normally the ferry route kind of just travels around the west side of Plum Island. When it does get very choppy and the wind is probably coming out of like probably northwest area, the boat will actually travel around Plum Island. So going to the east side of it and going through kind of between Detroit and Plum Island, probably to prevent that wind from pushing them one direction or another. So even today, there is some acknowledgement like, hey, this is choppy waters. We have to be somewhat careful. But obviously, as technology has improved, it's become a lot less deadly. And now you can even go and dive in some of the places there are shipwrecks and go check out ship ship graveyards. But I also want you to know, you know how, how the internet is always listening to you and like, I don't know, but like you say something and then it shows up in like an ad or something. I just want you all to know that in doing this research, I've never had this ad show up for me, but after doing a bunch of research into Death Store, Door County, whatever, I now have Death Store gin ads playing on my YouTube. So the sacrifices I make for all of you, it's very tough, very tough indeed. But I hope you enjoyed this episode talking about the origins of the name of Death Store Passage, Door County. I, you know, indulged a little bit more in my shipwreck intrigue. I just like it when things like go wrong. That's that's the interesting stuff. I'm sorry. History would be really boring if everything went correctly as planned. It just wouldn't be the same. But let me know what you guys think about this episode. And let me know if you guys have some suggestions on what you would like to hear next. Maybe some ideas for spooky season. We are coming up on that October. I'm sure there's something haunted Wisconsin I can do. But If you would like to leave a comment, let me know what you're thinking. You can do so on my Facebook page, Badgerland Journal Stories of Wisconsin. Or you can leave it on my Instagram page, Badgerland Journal. Or you can send me one of those emails at badgerlandjournal at gmail.com. Thank you all for listening, and we will see you next time. (laughs) 